Ugh. It's flashback time. Dad is a member of the uh, USS Hancock. They always have a reunion. And Dad and Mom every year used to go to re the reunion. Uh, this happened, well, I think I was 16. The reunion was in uh, Virginia Beach. It was a Friday. Reunion was going to be all weekend. That means two days of party. <laughs> Friday night, Saturday night. Well, mom and dad left. Uh, this was about five o'clock. I was home. And uh, they left. Well, I'd get on the phone. I called Gail. Gail had her uh, permit to drive. She just passed a driving test. And uh, she borrowed her parents' car and came down. Well, during that time, it used to get dark about 5.30, 6 o'clock. Gail got to the house about 6. And uh, my parents' bedroom is uh, downstairs just off the, what uh, my brothers and I used to call the playroom. It wasn't the living room. The living room was in front, and then you had another room, and their bedroom was right off the playroom, right next to the door that goes upstairs. So Gail and I went in and laid on mom and dad's bed. Started getting naked. Started having sex. Did not notice the car driving into the driveway. <laughs> but what I did notice was the light coming on. I whipped my head around. Dad's arm was just coming down from behind his wardrobe. And he was saying, Dorothy, it doesn't. And then he saw what Mom was seeing. I looked at Mom. Mom was reaching for her pocketbook. Well, Gail and I must have been making too much noise because all of a sudden, Mom must have turned her head. Her eyes were very large and open. Her mouth was as big as her eyes were. Her jaw dropped. And she is still reaching for her pocketbook. What I found out later was during the rush to go down there, they got down into Pennsylvania and realized that mom left her pocketbook on the dresser. And in the pocketbook was the tickets and the money and everything else needed for their weekend getaway. So they had to turn around and come back to get mom's pocketbook. Well, Dad proceeded, put, her hand, put his hands on Mom's shoulders, looked at me, and said, get dressed, we will be in the living room. And kind of guided Mom outside. I remember Mom's hand, arm, going over me and I don't think it was for blessing I think it was she was paralyzed <laughs> seeing her son well catching her son in the act of uh, what I call having fun anyways Gail and I get dressed Gail goes out 
straight up to the car. I go into the living room, Dad's sitting in his chair, Mom's sitting there. I walk around the little coffee table we had and sit down at the end of the couch. Mom could not take her eyes off me. She watched me enter the room, walk around the table, and sit. And <laughs> she just stared at me. And I'm just looking at her going, oh boy, am I in... I was thinking all kinds of, boy, am I in trouble. <laughs> oh, Lordy, <laughs> I done got caught. Well, then my dad popped up and said, why? Why my bed? You have a perfectly good bed upstairs to do that. My mother whipped her head around, pointed her finger at my dad. Now this is one thing about my mom. She calls you by name. She always called me Jean. When she was stern with me, it was Eugene. When she was a little perturbed, it was Eugene Taylor. Now, when I did something that really pissed her off, it was Eugene William Taylor. All three names. Well, when Mom pointed her finger at Dad, she said, Edward Gaylord Taylor, how dare you? Well, as soon as she started saying how dare you, I stood up and I started walking around the table and <laughs> I said something like, well, it looks like you two's got, <laughs> got a conversation. <laughs> I'll see you when you, when you get back. <laughs> I walked out, jumped in Gail's car, and <laughs> her and I took off. Well, Gail and I went to, I think A&W, talking the whole way. Gail informed me that she can't see me no more because that really embarrassed her and she won't be able to look mom in the face anymore. So we kind of ended it there at the a and Gail went back to Horseheads. I ended up walking home. And uh, when I got home, naturally, Mom and Dad were not there. But they arrived sometime during the night, Saturday night, because it was church Sunday morning. Nothing was said. Not one word was said about that. It was as if it never happened. Now years later, after I got married, and it was after uh, Corey was born, Bob and I was sitting out on the porch I think it was during the time that uh, that little girl walked into Alan's house. Well, Debbie and kids were at school. And I made the comment, you know, Lucky Al. I think it was a day or two after that that Mom brought up the issue concerning Gail because she couldn't remember who it was that she called. Well, Mom and I talked about that and I told Mom who it was. Uh, Mom told me that uh, Gail had gotten married in the 
they said child number four. Now apparently she was fertile myrtle because I understand that she's had uh, six kids all together. At least that's my understanding. But uh, I was really surprised that mom brought that up because I had completely forgot about it. And uh, to me it's comical the way life evolves and uh, you think of things that uh, should have been said back when it was supposed to have been said and not wait 10-15 years because mom was surprised she said that uh, she knew I knew what sex was but it surprised her when uh, I showed her that I can do it. Well, Mom also confided in me that uh, I was the only one that she caught. So with that, you guys have a very beautiful day and God bless.